Thank you for joining us for another edition of InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, the 11th day of November 2011, or 11 11 11. And occultists everywhere obsessed with numerology are going wild. And that's one of the first stories we're going to cover this evening. It's a jam packed transmission, uh, so stay with us. First off, 11 years ago at the new millennia, 2000, that was really one year short, 2001 was actually uh, the start of uh, the next thousand years. World leaders all gathered there at the Great Pyramid uh, outside of Cairo and engaged in bizarre rituals on television. It was hidden in plain view. And because of so many people attempting to conduct rituals around the Great Pyramid, they closed it. But then there were other reports that there were actually elitists inside engaging in their own rituals. In fact, there's the Jerusalem Post, Egypt closes pyramid over 11-11-11, ceremony of love. And it turns out another group of occultists wanted to put a circle around it and, and, and quote, hug the pyramid. But again, that's just their cover for their um, uh, bizarre rituals that are, that are taking place. So even if you don't believe in the occult, if you really study politics globally and study anthropology or history, the elites are always obsessed with it. Now, we've seen a lot of weird rituals going on out in California. They're having Aztec rituals in public. Um, they're engaged in weird rituals at the Great Pyramid. But let's look at the Masons in this country and a lot of the dark occultic things that have entered the Masonic Lodge since the time of Adam Weishaupt's Illuminati in Germany that took over France and then, of course, tried to invade the United States. George Washington himself warning about these groups. This is what's really going on. These are the power structures that are controlling our society today. These are the good old boy clubs. And I wanted to point out, this is footage from the 10th anniversary of 9-11, uh, where they engaged in a Masonic ritual. And isn't that uh, just special? You've got Dan Rather back to report on the date. CBS, the Eye of Horus. Let's play that footage one more time for people. And here uh, is the honor guard surrounding the eye, and they've got even the Egyptian, uh, you know, corner there uh, of the eye. Just absolutely incredible to see how they flaunt these Illuminati rituals right in front of us. roses on the site for a flower arrangement that will be turned into a permanent. Just incredible. Okay, continuing uh, here on Veterans Day, or 11-11-11. Hero soldiers thrown in the trash, military dumped body parts of dead servicemen killed in Iraq and Afghanistan in landfill. Uh, they dumped the remains of the police and firemen and others from 9-11 in a landfill. Uh, so that's ongoing. And of course, it's also come out that they saw the body parts in half, put the wrong bodies in caskets. They just treat the dead like absolute filth just like they let the troops have their pension funds stolen by the big insurance companies and on top of it, let them breathe depleted uranium. It just shows how, as Henry Kissinger said, they're seen as dumb animals by the elite. But the Pentagon is reviewing punishment over war dead remains, even though it's come out now that the Pentagon was told about this going on years ago. Years ago. You see, if you treat the Iraqis like garbage, the troops are going to end up being treated like garbage as well. Also, a veteran has shot himself uh, at a Vermont uh, encampment, the Associated Press is reporting. Uh, they're also reporting that it's some of the encampments, tuberculosis uh, has broken out. So what's happening here is, whether you're for Occupy Wall Street or not, the system is using the fact that people are getting tuberculosis, getting shot, dying, robberies, deaths every day, as a pretext to demonize the idea of protest and demonstration, period, as if it's dirty, corrupt, and evil. We've confirmed here in Austin, Texas, that they arrest homeless sleeping anywhere in town, but they tell them, we'll allow you to go sleep at Occupy Wall Street outside City Hall. And then when they defecate all over the ground and don't use the porta potties, they demonize them. And it's the same thing now in the media. 
uh, is that they are selling the idea that all these people are a bunch of criminals, but obviously criminals and homeless people and others are going to migrate and congregate around these open-air camps that are popping up. I mean, these are the modern Hoovervilles here in our nation. Now, continuing with our 11-11-11 Veterans Day coverage, Ron Paul's view on foreign occupations supported by U.S. troops, ignoring the facts, establishment media smears congressman as defending al-Qaeda, even though most of the even ABC News has admitted this. Most of the geopolitical experts say that Ron Paul uh, is right. And, of course, the vast majority, over 70% of the donations that troops give in the last election and this one uh, are to Congressman Ron Paul. And I want to take you to a piece uh, shot uh, a few nights ago by Darren McBreen here in Austin, Texas, at the last Republican debate, uh, which is... Uh, really the modern form of a football party. But, but people, instead of being obsessed and concerned about mindless sports that don't mean anything in the final equation, people are actually getting their priorities straight and caring about real issues. And Darren also ran into a lot of veterans and current serving military that were here in Austin at Brave New Books downtown watching the debate. Here's that report thought that one person, the Federal Reserve Board Chairman, knows what the money supply should be. Just in the past six months, M1 has gone up at the rate of 30 percent. That spells inflation, that spells lower standard of living and higher prices, and watch out, they're coming. Yeah. 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 Tell us more about the blood sport, the comparison to this event compared to, uh, let's say, football, boxing, that sort of thing. Right. You know, football, boxing, these are called blood sports, but they really don't compare to the blood sport of ideas that are talked about in these debates. Because what goes on from here, people die as a result of these ideas, and there's real blood involved. And so it, it's important for Americans to realize that, you know, Monday Night Football is great. I love football. I love watching sports. But we're at a, a real time in our history where ideas matter much more than our favorite football team and who wins the Super Bowl. I'm a veteran of the United States Army, and it's very important to me and a lot of my friends that I left when I ETS uh, to bring heroes home out of frivolous corporate wars. Uh, the fact that my friends and my friends' brothers and my neighbors' brothers and daughters are uh, dying for corporate greed that doesn't even trickle down to, the, to uh, our defense and only makes us more uh, unstable financially and physically, it's, it's abhorrent. It disgusts me. And, uh, and Ron Paul is the only uh, candidate up there that I truly believe uh, will stand up for his words. Why do you think that is, that uh, more military support Ron Paul than any other candidate? Before I say anything, I'd like to say that uh, my views do not represent the views of the Department of the Army, Department of Defense, but uh, it's because a lot of us would like to see the war ended. That is the reason. He gets not only more support from all the re Republican presidential candidates combined, but more than the current president combined, all of them. So every veteran I talk to, they're all behind Ron Paul. Uh, they will be going into Iran in the fall of 2012, right? Well, uh, they're not giving play to the fact that we've already touched down in Uganda. We've already touched down in Kenya. We've already sent drones over Somalia. We are expanding our empire in a way that's just not going to stop unless there is some serious, drastic change, not just to the way we're doing things now, but the way we think about ourselves in uh, the world. I don't understand how we now have, what is it, five wars that are undeclared? I mean, we were bombing Libya. We're bomb Now we have people in South Africa and in Somalia. I don't understand why people are, think it's suddenly okay to kill people just because their guy is in office. In my heart, I truly believe that Ron Paul is the last chance this country has. Because if they get by with this one, we're screwed. My father, he told me back in the late 70s that Ron Paul stood for liberty and he stood for sound money. Because in 1965, when they took the silver out of money, my father told me that one day the dollar would become worthless.
a lot of us here realize that it's actually a lot more than just a presidential debate. There's, it's more than just one guy uh, to get us out of the mess that we're in and, and really uh, do the revolution that we need. But uh, it's so great to see that there are this many people. Uh, you know, I don't see a, a bookstore that's here for uh, Romney or, or uh, any of the other pres presidential uh, you know, uh, candidates. I see this all for, uh, for someone who actually cares about the people and is addressing issues that are really prevalent, like in the Fed, ending all wars, uh, stopping uh, the big government and the harassment of our people. And, uh, you know, that, that's, that's something that's really exciting. So do you think uh, Ron Paul's, uh, he, he responded to some of the student loan questions. Did you like his response on those issues? Oh, I loved his response, and I think the government should be completely out of a student loan business. What they do whenever they get involved, they raise the price. Because if you say you're going to supply the money there no matter what, you increase the demand so the, um, the price is going to go up. If I said, you know, all Americans should have bicycles, and I was a president and I had a program that gave everyone, you know, money for bicycles or cars or something, Thing. What do you think the people who make the bicycles or cars are going to do? They're going to raise the prices. We have to wise up and look at where the bubbles come from. It's from the Federal Reserve, and we should start by auditing the Fed, and then we should end the Fed. Another great report by Darren McBreen and crew. Great job, and great job to all those great patriots down there. That is the Committees of Correspondence. That's the Sons of Liberty and the Daughters of Liberty right there. 2011, following in the footsteps of our founders, there is a contest, an animating contest between the forces of liberty and freedom and, 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 and empowerment of the human spirit and individualism and the collectivist. We're going to defeat these zombies, ladies and gentlemen, together. Great job with that report. Very, very exciting uh, to see that. And... I know that people are really waking up and all the great points that were made there. Now let's get to the really hardcore news of the evening. The Associated Press is reporting that the International Atomic Energy Agency uh, is saying that iodine-131 that shows up from nuclear meltdown and nuclear fission is increasing all across Europe. And it's because the Czech Republic is somewhat independent. They first reported it. This has actually been known for months. And there's been big meltdowns in France. Now, the reason I raise this is that all over the world, radiation levels are going up and up and up and up and up. They doubled during the atomic testing of the 50s and 60s. Then it more than doubled after Chernobyl because that was such an uh, incredible meltdown. Now Fukushima, five of the six reactors, each one more devastating than Chernobyl has melted down. And it's been raining radiation all over the northern hemisphere. And now they've had to admit that the radiation was, again, much higher than they'd said. Well, that came out on YouTube back when it was happening. The local Japanese were going with Geiger counters showing it 10, 15, 20 times what the government was saying. People have died over there of radiation exposure. That's now admitted, but now it's not the big national news story. So we have to ask ourselves, why is the United Nations Agency downplaying this radiation danger? I want to go over some of the history of this. The International Atomic Energy Agency is openly funded, over 90% of its funding, by the big uh, elements and the consortium that is itself funded by the big uh, nuclear industry by the biggest players in that. And I, I'm not against progress, I'm not against new technologies, but this is 40, 50 year old stuff, and there's a long history of covering up disasters when they happen. And now basically just saying radiation isn't a problem. I've seen George Mambian, a London Guardian, big environmentalist, eugenicist, population reductionist, promoter of world government, saying, ah, oh, so what if radiation levels are going up? So what if cancer levels are going up? You know what, I love nuclear power. Well, I certainly don't love uh, what's happening, and I don't appreciate my family being exposed to higher radiation. Uh, Chernobyl, 20 plus years after that disaster in 1986, has created a 12-fold increase uh, in many forms of cancer, and over a million people, according to studies, have died as a result of that. The Australian newspaper is reporting fears of radiation leak after explosion at a nuclear plant in southern France. And again, this happened a few months ago. And that's probably what's causing what's happening uh, uh, in the rest of Europe. But they won't, again, nail it down because they're not wanting to go after culpability because the nuclear industry runs the IAEA. Continuing, 
Don't forget, going back four or five months ago when radiation levels went up all across the U.S. because Japan's right here, here's the Pacific Ocean, here's North America, the, the trade winds, the jet stream blow towards the United States and over Europe, as the radiation levels went off the chart with different isotopes, the FDA just raised, depending on which isotope it was, 2,000 times, 5,000 times, 100,000 times, depending on the isotope, what they had said was previously safe. And again, all of these were isotopes directly linked to fission, to total meltdown, which the Japanese government denied, which our own government that had detectors over there denied, and later came out that they knew they were lying. The elites are breathing this stuff too. A, a, a crazy attitude has entered the equation where people in the establishment think that if they just rationalize things and just say, oh, you can eat poison, oh, you can jump off a cliff, oh, you can jump in front of a bus, that magically that somehow fixes it. That is not the case. Uh, so there's that report. Uh, and again, in Europe, for six months to a year, depending on the country, children only ate frozen food flown in, no milk, uh, things that have the higher levels of radiation in it after fallout. Now, here in the U.S. and in Europe and Japan, they're saying, eat everything, it's fine. Everything's wonderful. Now, continuing here, I want to look at some other uh, examples of cover-ups. In 1959, there was a nuclear reactor that completely blew up and totally melted down uh, in California. And it reportedly was even bigger than Chernobyl. Uh, they say it released 15 to 260 times the radiation of Three Mile Island. And no one even knew about this to a few years ago when they declassified it. There's been meltdowns in Canada in the last six months. There's been meltdowns and huge releases in France. This stuff is happening all over the place. I mean, is this an accident? I don't know. Dr. Busby, who's a physicist and a chemical engineer, has said that many of his colleagues believe this is being done on purpose because nothing reduces fertility like radiation. And of course, in the sodium fluoride they mine out of uh, phosphate um, fertilizer mines, there's also high levels of different radioactive isotopes uh, that is also added to our water. And since I've been harping on this the last two years, now local news around the country is going and investigating and putting Geiger counters up to city water pipes and going, my God, this is 10, 20 times safe levels and finding out, but they're saying, we don't know why it's in there. It's added, okay? It's added. It's all a plan. I know this isn't, in, as, as, uh, I know this isn't as important as the um, head football coach at Penn State being fired, but dying of radiation poisoning or having to form children uh, is almost as important uh, as uh, your precious pedophile-run college uh, getting in trouble. Uh, continuing here with this news and information, if we don't know about a meltdown in 59 in Simi Valley, wh what else is going on? Speaking of patriots here on Veterans Day, Dr. Doug Rocky is what, a physicist, a doctor, uh, a, a medical expert. He, he was the Pentagon's head expert for decades on DU. And he was the guy they sent to uh, do an assessment after the first Gulf War of what was happening there. Most of his team has actually died. He himself has had more than, I think it's up to 40 surgeries now or more uh, dealing with this. And you see, pre-1991, pre they would not allow the troops to use this. It was a desperate Cold War weapon if the Russians poured into Europe 10 to 1 superiority to take out tanks when a nuclear war was already happening. Because when you fire it out of an Abrams tank or you fire it out of your M16 or 50 cal or uh, the Bradley fighting vehicle's gun, it ignites and gives a lethal dose to those around it. One whiff of this, 20, 30 years, depending on the study off your life. Continued exposure, you'll die within months. Okay, I mean, th this is serious. Why have they waved a magic wand? They had this stuff in the 40s. There's reports on that. Back then they said don't use it in the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. Then they say use it. Now they're using it in small arms. Now it's at proving grounds at National Guard bases. Now they say, hey, it's wonderful. What changed? They just waved a magic wand. In fact, we have some quotes of uh, former Secretary of Defense 
uh, bragging that'll come up in a moment uh, where, where the Secretary of Defense is just bragging, saying there, there's no problem with this when their own manuals say it. Here's a quote, and it's not just children in Iraq, it's children born to soldiers after they come back. This is Doug Rocky. The military admitted they were finding uranium excreted in the uh, semen of soldiers. If you've got uranium in the semen, the genetics are messed up. So when the children are conceived, and Life magazine admitted 10 years ago there was a tripling in birth defects in soldiers, the alpha particles cause such tremendous cell damage and genetics damage that everything goes bad. Studies have found that male soldiers who served in the Gulf War were almost twice as likely to have children, yeah, actually worse, it's triple, with birth defects and female soldiers almost three times as likely. See, I hadn't read that quote, Dude got ready, and I was saying it's actually three times, and then he got to the bottom and I was correct. But it was the cover of Life magazine. I said 10 years ago, I think it was like 95. You might even search it. It's like Life magazine uh, covers Gulf War vet deformities, and it'll, it'll show the father with his deformed child. The point here is this isn't a game. These people say, wave a magic wand, DU's okay. Wave a magic wand, all the honeybees are dying, but we've got GMO. Wave a magic wand, and I'm sorry to show you that, folks. That's real photos. <laughs> They've got a 12 to 16 times increase uh, in Serbia where they bombed them, NATO did, uh, in Fallujah, I mean, my God, and and uh, people are even getting tumors who are adults. Uh, 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 I mean, they're having toxic Avenger type effects, not in utero, but after. And I'm sorry to have to show you this, but it goes to the madness of the people running things. I mean, it goes to just the complete insanity, and they know what they're doing. So. Here's another Dr. Doug Rocky. Everyone on my team was getting sick. My best friend John Sitton was dying. The military refused him medical care, and he died. John set up the Medical Evacuation Commission system in the entire theater. Then he got contaminated doing the work. When we first got assigned to clean up the DU and arrived in South Northern Saudi Arabia, we started getting sick within 72 hours. Respiratory problems, rashes, bleeding, open sores, almost immediately. This is the guy that wrote the book on it. But meanwhile, we have quotes of Secretary of Defense saying, hey, there's no evidence this is bad, when the Army's own manuals, pre-91, said do not use this. And there's William Cohen under Clinton saying, never mind all these dead and dying troops. There's no scientific link has been found between the reported illness and depleted uranium, a dense, mildly radioactive metal that the U.S. military uses both in tank-busting munitions and as armor. And of course, that was... 15, 16, 17 years ago. Now it's used in everything. Here's another report. Seattle Post Intelligence, sir. Iraq cancers, birth defects blamed on U.S. to put uranium. I mean, th they all know exactly what's going on. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is the reality of the elite that's running things. Yeah, there's the uh, manual. The U.S. Army acknowledges the hazards and training manual in which it requires that anyone who comes within 25 meters of any DU contaminated equipment or terrain wear respiratory and skin protection and states that contamination will make food and water unsafe for consumption. Yeah, for four billion years. <laughs> yeah, cancer rate has increased dramatically in southern Iraq. 34 people died of cancer in 1980. 1998, 450 died of cancer, 2001, there were 603 cancer deaths. And that's a complete whitewash. That's why I stumbled over that. Okay, uh, look, that's enough. Uh, I, I know you've got a bunch of other graphics. I guess we could just keep showing them all the evidence. Again, the, the Army's own manuals from the 50s to the 1990 said, do not use this, do not use this. When you fire it out the barrel, it ignites and leaves a whole bunch of it. Then they send it in for the, for the crews to clean it and scrub it. They don't even tell them to wear protective gear now. And they're dying all over the place in mass. The deformed children, all of it. It's a celebrating 15 years of depleted uranium. It's actually, they've been using depleted uranium since 1991 in widespread operations all over the world. Yeah, but it, whatever, 15 years, whatever. Doesn't matter. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's just continue here with the news for you. Uh, there's been a federal crackdown assured as ESA alert fails to go nationwide, and now the feds don't wish to want to take over uh, TV, cable, and AM and FM. Uh, now they want to take over your cell phones, everything, and when you're in Walmarts and other stores, bombard you with brainwashing. 
uh, continuing uh, with the news and information. Uh, the London Telegraph is reporting uh, that Eurozone collapse will send continent into depression. The collapse of the Eurozone will cause a crash that could instantly wipe out half of the value of the Europe's economy, plunging the continent into depression as deep as the 1930s slump. The president of the European Union Commission has warned. And that's Barroso. And basically they're saying, give us unlimited trillions. Two trillion this month, five trillion next month, more taxes, more regulations, by the very banks that engineered the collapse, or society as we know it will end. That's what they've been saying. And they'll get a couple more bailouts out of fear mongering. And then they'll go ahead and collapse the euro as we know it and call it a new economic system uh, where everybody basically is just slaves to the new uh, bank of the world. And so it is the end of the eurozone as we know it, and they're all basically acting like uh, that it's an out-of-control situation when really it's an order out of chaos situation. Now, I want to go to this next video. Uh, you've seen uh, footage of people not allowed in Michigan to grow gardens, or you've seen footage all over the country in news articles where people are being arrested for lemonade stands. You've seen Amish arrested. I mean, the system wants you buying your food irradiated from a big box store, and they that's the end of it, okay? The, they're SWAT teaming people selling oranges now. I mean, this is about control. This is about, I mean, Stalin wouldn't let people grow their own food. This is total control. And there's a new report from Natural News. It's also up at Infowars.com. Health department tyrants raid local farm to fork picnic dinner. And it's a local co-op where people produce their own sheep, their own cattle, their own uh, farm-raised uh, uh, vegetables. And then they all get together, maybe a hundred of them or so, around a big, long picnic table out under the stars in southern Nevada. And you'll see some video of it coming up shot by the photographer that was there to take photos for the co-op. And uh, it's up on his YouTube channel if you want to watch the whole thing. But the uh, state shows up enforcing their state and federal regulations and explain to them that you're not allowed to butcher your own food and eat it. And I've seen reports where people butchering their own deer get arrested now just because it's seen as unsanitary. We're becoming total prisoners as they feed us GMO food, irradiated rotten meat, as they push every form of poison on us. But the government comes in and says, oh, Big Pharma has been causing some agriculture problems, so we're now going to harass you, the little guy. Big Pharma and Big Agra, because Big Agra is Big Pharma, literally it's merged, is waging war against local farms and ranches, and that's what's happening. Here's the clip. Um, please. Hmm? And who are you? Mary Oaks with the Southern Nevada Health District. And why are you here? That's all the information you need. I do have a personal life, too. I want you to say that the health district has... That is the essence of the bureaucrat. Just enjoying the fact that they're in authority, they're in power. They've got their little clipboard, they're, they're secure, they've got all their little bureaucracies, all their little rules. I do have a personal life, that's all you need to know. I've invaded your space and I'm about to make you destroy your food. Look, look, look at the satisfaction, it's just like a... You don't get it, I win victories every day in my life against people just like you. You know who I am. <laughs> let's, let's go back to it. Destroy, they're destroying the potatoes. And they go on and say, any vegetables not approved by them are a biohazard. That's right. You know, I do have my own personal life. <laughs> let's go back to it. Told us that we can't serve meat from the farm, meat from any farm, Unless it's been you, United States Department of Agriculture approved. Approved. Right. I knew that. And um, the issue with they you came from across the border. Across the Utah, border. Yeah. And because it was certified by Utah, we couldn't use it. pause. This is the bureaucrats telling them you cannot grow, you can't. That's in the Food Safety Act. I told you, you cannot, they even said this in Congress, you cannot slice slice a watermelon you grew and have your neighbors over and feed it to them. And that's why it's like, there's not gardens in your yard. 
You're not going to raise honeybees. You're not going to have honey. It's over. We're the boss. They have the new Rural Affairs Commission taking over everything. Let's go back and finish the clip. Because the stuff that was uh, approved by the state of Nevada, we could use. Oh, yeah, hit pause be... again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can go read all the news articles. The, the state came with the federal regulations and said, you've got to do all these things we tell you. They went and got permits. They jumped through the hoops. And they just showed up and went, <laughs> you think in America you're going to feed some people some potatoes you grew? <laughs> you're going to have some friends over here at the co-op? where you guys all share the food you grow and produce locally and come and buy like they're... No, no, no. You people, because this is spreading all over the country, the system's scared. Humans are actually getting back to real farming and then... I mean, I went to so many community events as a child at my dad's farm, family farm, where, where you know, when the grandparents were alive, where everybody brought food. They'd even, they'd even barbecue meat they brought. People would bring vegetables they'd cook. They'd start in the morning hanging out, playing games, horseshoes, cracking the food. They'd cook lunch. They'd cook dinner, hanging out outside. And they're like, you're going to go inside and take Prozac and watch television, and you're going to eat a TV dinner that's got more ingredients in it uh, than the Encyclopedia Britannica has. And uh, that's the end of it. You think you're going to boil some potatoes? Uh-uh. You think you're going to have free association? No. No! Go back to the clip. Why do you use the vegetables? Because once they're cut, once they're cooked, they're biohazard material. Yes. And so, even though I boiled so, them, and so they're forcing us to throw all the food away and pour bleach. We can, we can, we can't feed it to our pigs because and we're not allowed to eat. And we're not allowed to eat it as private citizens. All right, hit pause. And we have to pour bleach on. Big Agra just totally destroys the food system. Take one example. They want to feed you rotten meats. They pass laws to radiate it. They just feed you radiated, bacteria, feces-covered food. They've got laws passed where they can have such amount of bacteria, bug parts. They're the ones writing the regulations, and then you've got totally fresh food. You're having some friends over to eat, and they say, no, no, no. See, that's how this works. Go ahead and finish the clip. Okay, so, so you'll tell us if we're doing something yeah, wrong. I'll, yeah, I'll end up signing off. Okay. And then you'll awesome. be good and I'll be able to leave. I really think it's appalling that we live in America and we can't make choices about the food that we're planning to eat. Especially good food. Fresh, wholesome food. Perfect food. Yes. And there's people starving in yes. America and all over the world. It's despicable with the feast that was prepared to have the order for not a valid reason uh -huh. for a certified chef to destroy all this food. Exactly. It's just an absolute shame. Not because we're here, but because it's good quality food that has no reason to be destroyed. It's all right for the USDA to let us all kill ourselves eating McDonald's, but this good wholesome stuff isn't all right. So, but that's such a such a terrible thing. We got to do something about it. What should we do? Well, just collaborate like what we're doing now. Support your local farmers. And uh, supporting local is where uh, it's going to That's enough. Start. It goes on and on. Look, 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 look. Here's the deal. These are well-meaning liberals. That's why they were chosen to set this precedent. You do this at some backwoods barbecue, you're going to get in big trouble. Okay? This is about the state running every level of your life, and they're scared that people are waking up, and they want to create a chilling effect over it. Unless you're a prince. Now, I've, I've read books about it, seen documentaries. I'm glad the crew, without me even pointing this out, found this for themselves, that I've seen PBS documentaries and others where the royal family, no matter where they go in the world, have their own organic food taken with them. And on their ancestral lands, which are thousands of square miles, they have whole villages that are basically in the 18th century, or 19th maximum, with organic food, organic meat, organic everything. And Prince Charles goes all around being part of this and promoting it. So the elites are all into this. So what's happening is the foodies are now catching on to this, and it scares the system to death. So we got a short clip of uh, Prince Charles in England going to a organic farm and praising him for all producing it right there and then delivering it uh, up to him. Uh, here it is. 
The Prince of Wales hosts a reception for the Garden Organic. A sunny garden at Highgrove played the setting for a Garden Organic reception hosted by the Prince of Wales today. The charity has promoted ways of growing organic food for over 20 years and has attracted a number of well-known food industry experts to its cause, including michelin star chef Raymond Blanc. The Prince's own garden at Highgrove has been run on an organic basis for the last 20 years, as is the nearby Duchy Home Farm. The gardens at Clarence House and Burkhall are managed in the same way. What's happening is the trendies and others are discovering what the rich elite are doing. So now they want to copy it and the system's saying no. You're going to eat some McDonald's. You're going to eat some GMO. Now drink some fluoride and shut up and take your vaccine. Your cancer rate's tripling. The organics for the elite, not for you. Comprende? Now, speaking of the CIA holding the hand of Ronald Reagan, uh, grade school in-class video or classified presidential briefing, CIA reveals videos it made to help Ronald Reagan. And uh, here is just part of this incredible taxpayer paid for video where they're like, and then you'll go here and then you'll go there. Uh, you know, all just scripting everything for Ronald Reagan. And this was classified. This the American people weren't supposed to see. It will be nearly two in the morning on Thursday, May 26th, Mr. President, when Air Force One puts down at Helsinki. After an eight-and-a-half-hour flight and a seven-hour time change, the Finnish capital will be the first leg on your 10-day summit trip. On Tuesday, Mrs. Reagan travels to Leningrad for a day of sightseeing. Your day begins with a short morning meeting with General Secretary Gorbachev in his private Kremlin office, following which you and he will walk through the Kremlin grounds to St. Catherine's Hall, for another session. Look at those thugs. The tenth and final day of your summit trip, Mr. President, will feature a noon address at the Guild Hall, which is located in the old city section of London and has been around for some six centuries. The primary host for the occasion that day is the Corporation of London, headed by the Lord Mayor. Along with the you notice they're talking about the Lord Mayor and the Corporation of London. Let's finish the clip. Officials of the old city will be members of Chatham House, the Royal Institute of International Affairs. Following the Guildhall address, you and Mrs. Reagan are scheduled to meet with U.S. Embassy personnel at Winfield House prior to your departure for home. Shortly before 2 p.m. London time, Air Force One will take off from Heathrow Airport for the seven and a half hour return flight and scheduled late afternoon arrival at Andrews Air Force Base. And all of this is scripted to this day. You notice that looks like news from the 1980s. That's because the CBS Broadcast Center in Manhattan at that time was producing the news packages for the other networks. It's all scripted. That's why it's the same news in the same order with the same commercials as we've shown you earlier in the week. It's all completely scripted. That's why they hate the internet and hate free speech because it doesn't allow them to send one conduit of, 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 of poisonous bull into the people's minds. Now, speaking of evil, we showed you the sports fans angry that the head coach, who is an accomplice to what's happened uh, there uh, in Penn State, got angry and were dumping over cars and things because they have their values all screwed up. Well, uh, talking about uh, just demonic youth violence, there's footage out of Chicago of an old man uh, kind of scared walking through a crowd of thugs and then one of them goes over for no reason and punches him full power and knocks him down to the ground with the uppercut that can kill somebody and his head hits the ground and splits open and even after the pool of blood spills out these guys feel powerful from it as good little psychopaths and have a celebration and the police say they can't do anything unless they can find the old man and get him to press charges that's not true uh, this crime was publicly witnessed and it just shows how the system's putting up all these cameras, all the surveillance, but then never does anything with the evidence. Even when the people that did it uploaded it to a site 
uh, that from the reports I've seen revels in this type of dehumanization. It's truly despicable, and it, it, it's part of a nationwide trend of youth beating old people, homeless people, mentally ill people. And it uh, just shows how much trouble our society's in. Here it is. <laughs> Real tough guys. Darren pointed out that somebody is going to find those guys and beat the living hell out of them. But it's just, it's just so shameful. But, you know, that same attitude you saw when you have thug cops, not all cops, but the thug ones, they like doing that to old ladies, tasering people, whoever, for no reason. I mean, they get off on inflicting the violence, and that's very painful to watch that old man in a pool of blood and those guys getting off on it. But they're young and stupid. They have no connection to reality. They should hit their knees and repent to God because that's some bad mojo coming back at you. Let me tell you something. That type of cowardly act... God, you got a horrible life ahead of you. The world, the universe is going to pay you back ten times for every act like that. Don't ever think bad stuff you do doesn't come back on you. So I feel sorry for you. I really feel sorry for you. You can kill somebody like that. Who knows what happened to that old man? Chicago police sure don't care. They're in the news saying they're not going to do anything about it. All right, that's basically uh, it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're going to... Uh, in the transmission at this point. No guest tonight. And Lord willing, uh, I'll see you back this Sunday on the radio, 4 to 6 p.m., and then back at 11 a.m. Monday at InfoWars.com. And uh, if you are watching this later on the internet and like unscripted teleprompter free news and analysis and commentary, then uh, get the 15 day free trial. We've got the special report section with just incredible information, the rant section, and the nightly news. And of course, the daily three hour radio slash TV show. And then all my films, my book, Paul Watson's book, commercial free archive podcast. I mean, it's ridiculous. Almost nine years of material up there, 15 cents a day, $5.95 a month. But get your free 15 day trial now uh, at prisonplanet.tv. Uh, or InfoWarsNews.com. Or you can also, uh, right now, get 18 of my films for $99.95. That's a $260 off the regular price. And finish all your Christmas or holiday shopping in one, one, one fell swoop. Because uh, there's one of the films has, one of the DVDs has two films on it. So it's 17 packages, 18 films, $99.95. Ninety-five for PrisonPlanet.tv viewers or folks watching this out across cyberspace. And the small profit we make also funds the operation. I want to thank everybody for supporting the Money Bomb as well. We're going to hire more reporters and more crew members and hopefully uh, another host or two. So yours truly will do the radio show every day and then do this a couple nights a week. It also brings some variety to it. Do is going to, he stepped up without asking. Do, who's a smart guy. He's going to be hosting the news uh, once, coming up about a week and a half. Aaron Dykes as well. We're getting quite a crew uh, lined up here. All right, that's it for Fall Wars Nightly News. We'll see you tomorrow. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there, InfoWars.com.